Welcome to Next Games, a guide to ninja series. This is the third video in the gear set series. This video will go over intermediate gear sets for ninja. Let's quickly talk about the five gear set videos I've been doing so that you know which one of these gear set categories your current gear set fits into. Now the first video I did was a starting out gear set video. This was basically for ninjas that were just starting out that had no other gear to wear. This primarily consisted of getting domain invasion gear and then using that to get your basic gear set. Everything in the basic gear set comes from Ambuscade. So you will work on doing lots of Ambuscade solo to get the two gear sets that I go over in those videos. After you finish equipping yourself with those two gear sets and your Ambuscade Katana, you're ready to solo all of the content in the intermediate gear set selection, which is what I'll be going over in this video. Now let's quickly talk about what's in this intermediate gear set video and what types of gear qualify for this. Well, this is going to include any pre-eye level events, such as Sky, Sea, Nizel, Salvage, and Herjar, etc. Any Relic gear is plus one, all your Artifact gear that is plus one, and all the Empyrean-related job gear that is plus one. I'll also include Skirmish gear, Eshin Zeta gear, all the way through all the T2 NMs, and I'll also include all the gear that you can get from HTMBs. Now this is excluding all of the new HTMBs that you enter through Selvinia. Those will actually be covered in our advanced gear set video. I'll also include Unity NMs through level 122. I'll also expect that you have SU3 unlocked for your equipment. If you do not have enough job points for that, you definitely want to be working on it at this stage. And I will also recommend that you have a normal quality JSE neck from Dynamis D. Now obviously you need three people to enter Dynamis D, but all you have to do is enter, so usually you can easily accomplish this with a shout. Now let's quickly talk about the next two videos that we'll be seeing in this series. The next one is the advanced gear set video. This is where you decide to take Ninja to the next level. In this gear set series, we'll be going over 13 gear sets instead of the seven that we'll be going over here, adding dual wield 20, dual wield 40, magic burst, magic defense, magic evasion, and defense gear sets. Here, we add more difficult to solo content such as Eshin Ruan and Rizenma, as well as expensive plus one gear from the auction house. This will basically show you the best attainable gear when you are entirely solo. By this section, it's assumed you are working on or have a relic or Empyrean katana. I will go over gear sets for both. And in the final video, I'll be going over the elite gear set. This gear set will reflect what I feel is the best in slot gear for ninja. It includes a total of 21 gear sets, which include all major weapon skills. Gear in this set comes from the game's current endgame content that takes three or more people to enter or win. This includes Vagary, Omen, Dynamis Divergence, and higher level Eshin content. By this section, it's assumed you have a Relic, Empyrean, Oriana Katana, or a Fudo Masamun. Now let's go ahead and get into the first intermediate gear set that I'll be going over, the TP gear set. Now, unlike my previous gear set videos, I will be offering a few alternatives in many of these slots just in case you don't have the gear that I'm recommending and possibly have a close substitute. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this TP gear set. So before we discuss what's in the TP gear set, let's talk about what is important in a TP gear set. In general terms, you want your TP gear set, along with any magical haste buffs, to allow you to hit the weapon delay reduction cap. Once you hit that cap, you then want to stack as much multi-hit gear as possible into the set to further increase your TP gain. Now all sets these days easily achieve the 25% haste reduction cap through equipment. You will also always have your dual wield 5 trait, which gives you a constant 35 dual wield. So this means that what you will need to reach that delay reduction cap will be 43.75 magical haste. Now you will get 30% magical haste just from haste 2 from Koru Moro, and Joachim and his marches will give you 15.14 magical haste from a single march. So we will normally be about one dual wield away from being totally delay reduction capped. Therefore, we will not be bothering with dual wield gear in this setup I'm about to talk about. However, in my next video going over advanced gear sets, I will be going over a gear set to cap your delay reduction for use only when you have haste 2. I call that a dual wield 20 set. And another that you should be wearing when you have no magical haste. I call that a dual wield 40 set. I also built all these intermediate gear sets with you having two specific weapons in mind. The Gokutai Ambuscade Katana in your main hand, and the Shigi in your offhand. The only Katanas that should beat these are Rima weapons, the SU-5 weapons, and some offhand weapons like Torret and the Achi. 
That we will go over in our next advanced gear set video. If you happen to have any of those options available, then by all means use them instead of this setup. Otherwise, I recommend using the Gokutai Shigi combination at this stage. Now the main reason that we choose to use the Ambuscade Katana is its base weapon damage and its stats. We will not be taking advantage of the boost to Ku's damage or the regain from dual wield. The reasons for choosing Shigi are for its low delay of 190, the Ninjutsu recast reduction of 3, and the 5% damage reduction that you get on the augment. Now let's quickly discuss the four pieces of gear that have not changed from our last gear set. They are the Brutal Earring, Epona's Ring, the Wind Buffet Belt, and the Endartia's Mantle with the double attack trait on it. Now in regards to armor, I suggest you go with a full set of Kendut Saba from the Auction House. This set offers many traits that will play to ninja's strengths. Triple attack of 18%, a critical hit rate boost of 21%, it will cap your subtle blow at 50. It has good hit point boosting stats which will keep your base hit points relatively high when using this set. It has good stat bonuses in comparison to other things that you can wear at this stage. It has good evasion bonus, good accuracy bonus, and good magic evasion bonus, and it has exceptionally good magic defense bonus on it. Now with all these amazing stats this gear set really is hard to beat at this level of the game. There are two downsides to it though. The first is that this is SU3 equipment, and that means you need to have 500 job points in order to equip it. So if you don't have that much yet, you definitely want to keep working on it until you get to there before you get to this stage of this intermediate gear set. The second downside is the gear can be kind of expensive. All in all, it should cost you anywhere from 7 to 10 million for all five pieces. Now that may sound like a lot, but I'm going to show you a technique here in a minute that allows you to very easily earn that money while you're getting those job points. Before we get to that though, let's go ahead and finish going over this gear set. The next thing I'd like to focus your attention on is the shuriken slot. Now previously we had used a date shuriken here, which gives us a dex, agi, accuracy, and evasion bonus of 5, and an enemy bonus of 3. Now comparatively, I'm now suggesting you use the hapo shuriken. This gives you an accuracy bonus of 6, an attack bonus of 6, and adds 2% to your critical hit rate, which complements the Kendu Tsaba set well. Now, the Date Shuriken actually has 8 more ranged accuracy on it, so if you're in a situation to where that comes into play, the Date Shuriken's probably still going to pull ahead. And truthfully, there really isn't much difference between this two. You can use either one. I just prefer to use the Hapo Shuriken plus one when using the Kendu Tsaba set to try and boost and get that critical hit rate as high as I can. Additionally, it's worth pointing out that the Hapo Shuriken plus one is actually kind of hard to find on most servers, and if you do find it, it's usually going to set you back either one to three million gil. So definitely your money would be better spent on things like the Kendu Tsaba set, uh, but I do think this is a nice addition to your uh, TP gain set uh, if you happen to be able to pick one up. Now the next slot we're going to talk about is the next slot, and I do kind of bend my rule here because I'm suggesting a Ninja Notawa, which in order to upgrade, you need to have entered Dynamis D, which is of course group content. You need three people in order to enter that. However, you don't have to do anything else besides just enter and warp. So what I suggest you do is just go ahead and yell and try and find other people who either need, need this in order to actually get the clear so that they also can upgrade their gear. Or, oftentimes people will want to, especially Puppet Masters, solo inside of Dynamis. So just yell and see if you can find anyone else who's about to enter Dynamis that you can tag along with. And tell them all you want to do is just enter and warp. After you've warped, just trade the necklace to Obero at the bottom of the stairs in Port Juno and it will begin the upgrade process. You then need to trade six stacks of heroism crystals that you can get off the auction house for three to five million per stack in order to actually finish the upgrade process to rank 15 and get the full 15% docking effect. Now I know not everyone's going to want to spend upwards of 30 million gil on this piece, so let's go ahead and talk about some alternatives. The first one being a portis collar that will give you a double attack plus 3% trait. Now you can get this from the classic Dynamis once you beat Diablos in the final zone. Now this may be difficult for some, so if you can't do that one either, then I can also suggest just purchasing an Ege necklace off of the auction house. Now this is usually going to cost about 100k, and the accuracy of 15, the ranged accuracy for Dokken, and the evasion of 15 
will all play into Ninja's strengths, and you can use it either until you get access to Dynamis Divergence, or until you get access to some of the other necks that you'll get access to in the Advanced Gear Set section. Now the next item we're going to talk about is the Ring Slot. Now this is our TP gain set, so this may seem like a confusing choice, but I remind you this is also the set that we're going to be in the majority of the time. Now we're already getting a 5% reduction from our cape and a 5% reduction from our offhand katana. So if we add this 10 more percent with the defending re, we're only about 1% away from cap for the damage reduction and that's in our TP gain set. Now when you look at the alternatives at this point in the game for rings, the most we can really add here is about 1% double attack and 4 to 6 store TP. And really in the whole scheme of things that's not going to make much of a difference. However, 10% damage reduction could make a significant difference in keeping us alive. Especially when I'm expecting you to use this set to solo all of the gear that we're going to be going over in my advanced gear sets video. So the defending ring can kind of be a pain to get. In order to get one you have to defeat King Bemoth and the drop rate on it is very low. You will need a savory shank in order to pop King Bemoth and you can get this from either dropping off of a Bemoth or from spending 1000 to 1500 login points. Now, in order to pop Bemoth, you will need to spend 500 to 750 login points for that beastly shank, or you can get a Themis orb for 99 kindred seals and do the BCNM Horns of War for a chance for also getting a beastly shank. Once you use that beastly shank to pop the Bemoth, that Bemoth has a chance to drop a savory shank. It's usually about a 25% chance from what I've noticed. Others have noticed a drop rate as low as 10% on the savory shank. The last thing I will note is the drop rate on the defending ring itself is only about 5%. So this is definitely something that you could be at for a long period of time. While you are working on that, this Pernicus ring from the Diablos Waking Dreams 2 HTMB will work just fine, as will any other ring with some store TP on it. This one just happens to play well to Ninja's strengths. The last slot we need to discuss in our TP setup is the earring. And for here I recommend the C-Sense earring from the one to be feared 2 HTMB against Omega and Ultima. It gives you 6 accuracy, 3 double attack, and 3 store TP. And that's very hard to beat in this slot at this point in the game. Due to this, there aren't very many alternatives to this. I guess while you're working on it, you can get the mock earring off the auction house for a low price, but really it's of no comparison to the Sasan's earring. Next, we will be going over our Blade High gear set. Now I've gotten a lot of questions through the years of why I like Blade High so much and why I don't use weapon skill X, Y, or Z. Well, this video should finally put that question to rest. At this point in the game, there is simply no other weapon skill that comes close. Blade High puts out two to three times the DPS number of every other setup. Now I'll show this later on in the video when we go over DPS numbers, as I will show you what the other weapon skills achieve when gear sets are made specifically for them, and that Blade High is simply just on another level at this point. So what is important in a Blade High gear set? Well in general, if you are just going for the highest weapon skill damage numbers, then the order of importance should be weapon skill damage, critical hit damage, critical hit rate, agi. Now I've done lots of messing with Blade High damage numbers, and focusing it on critical hit rate first. And when I do so, the damage numbers actually don't end up being far behind of putting weapon skill and critical hit damage first. And it makes your weapon skills much more consistent, which in turn helps with your skill chain numbers. Now in the setup I propose, I still prioritize weapon skill and critical hit damage first. But if you are having to make substitutions to the gear that I mentioned in this video, then keep this in mind because critical hit rate really is as almost as important as weapon skill damage and critical hit damage when it comes to blade high. Now the setup I propose here will give you a critical hit rating of 72% at the time of using blade high at 1000 TP. Now currently if you use all the critical hit rate gear in the game, you can cap your critical hit rate at 99% at 1000 TP. So by the time we get to the elite gear set, that's what we will be capable of. So that's where the decision of whether you will want to focus on weapon skill damage or critical hit rate will come most into play. Now I haven't discussed it yet, so let's quickly talk about how you acquire Blade High. Now you must complete the storyline quest Guardian of the Void before doing this quest, so make sure you've done that. Next you need to get the Kasagi minus one from the chest next to the Magian Moogle in Rulu Gardens at H5. Now purchase from bazaars or farm from Walk of Echoes the following items after you've done that. 
30 coins of glory, 100 devious die, and 100 liminal residue. After you have those items, trade them when asked to progress through the weapon upgrade. Once you've finished, equip the weapon and select the question marks inside of Walk of Echoes, which can be found right next to the home point warp in Zarkabard S. You will then be able to use Blade High with any weapon. Since we're going over weapon skills, I might as well discuss how to acquire Blade Kamu. To do this, you just need to acquire the Vigil weapon from Nizal Isle, talk with Zalzum in Lower Juno H9 with the weapon equipped. You will then need to complete 250 weapon skill points with the weapon equipped to unblock Blade Kamu. Closing a level 1 SC will give you 2 points, a level 2 SC 3 points, and a level 3 SC 5 points. Once you've acquired enough points, the weapon skill will appear in your list of available weapon skills when you have that weapon equipped. Once that happens, just trade the weapon to Zelsham and you'll be able to use Blade Kamu with any katana. Now to acquire Blade Ku, it's very similar to acquiring Blade Kamu. Speak with Ryoma at H8 in Norg to get a Kadachi of Trials. You'll need to have this weapon equipped and close skill change just like you did with Blade Kamu to unlock the weapon skill. The only real difference is you do get one point for any weapon skill you do, so you could just spam weapon skills if you want for these points. Closing any level 1 skill chain gives you 2, level 2, 3, and level 3, 5 points, just like it did previously. You will know that you are finished with points when you can equip the Kadachi of Trials and the bonus stats that are on it do not apply to you. Once finished, trade the Kadachi to Ryoma, who will then give you a key item. Now go to the Labyrinth of Anzozo at I-5 and click on the question marks to spawn a Crab Notorious Monster. Once you defeat the Crab, you will get the key item, Annals of Truth. Now speak with Ryoma one last time, and you have now unlocked Blade Ku. The last weapon skill you can unlock is just Blade Shun, and in case you already don't know, you can simply go into your Merits and use your Merits to unlock this weapon skill. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this Blade High gear set. So let's start with the head slot. We choose a Mumu Bonnet plus 2 here. The main reason this is selected is for its Agi bonus of 34 and its critical hit rate bonus of 5%. The next piece we'll talk about is the body slot. Here we choose a Mumu Jacket plus 2. We select this for its Agi bonus of 44 and its critical hit rate increase of 9%. For hands, we're going to select the Mumu Wrist plus 2. The main reason we're selecting these are for the Agi of 22, the double attack of 6%, and the critical hit rate of 6%. The next piece we'll talk about is the Mumu Kex plus 2 for the leg slot. Now this gives us a critical hit rate bonus of 7 and an Agi of 45. Now there is another piece that you could use in this slot that's just about equal on the parser, and that is the Hizamaro Hizatori plus 2. And this now only has 24 Agi, so you're definitely taking a big hit on that Agi, but it's going to increase your overall weapon skill damage by 7%. So that 72% crit rate is going to go down to 65, but your overall weapon skill damage is going to go up. So this is definitely a viable option. I choose to use the Mumu Kex plus 2 here just because I'm using Mumu everywhere else and to go along with the ring. But really, either option is fine. The Mumu Gamishes plus 2 we select for the Agi bonus of 57, which is a great bonus, and the critical hit rate boost of 5%. Next, we're going to talk about the Mumu Ring. We obviously select this because it gives us our set bonus and all that extra agility because of it. And then additionally, it will increase our critical hit rate by 3%. The next piece we're going to talk about is the Girder Belt. Now, this is a recent piece from Domain Invasion. Now, you can't get it directly from it. You have to purchase the 1200 point item called Worm Ash and then have a synther synth that for you. And then you can get the Girder Belt. Now, alternatively, you can just go to the auction house and purchase it. I think it's going for anywhere between 10 and 30 million right now, so you definitely would like to uh, find a, a synther to take care of it for you if you can to save you that cost. Now, it will increase your critical hit rate by 3% and give you an agi boost of 5. So you're going to be using this all the way till end game if you're using Blade High, because it definitely is best in slot at this point. Now, the Nefarious Collar is what I use with this setup, which will boost our critical hit rate by 3%. Now, there are other options here. Specifically, we've already probably taken care of our ninja Nodawa and spent all that money on it. Now it's going to increase our physical damage limit by 6% and give us 10 Agi which will of course help with our blade high damage. So this is absolutely a workable option as well. So either one of these two will work. I just with this setup was really trying to push uh, our critical hit rate as high as we could. Be between this and the various collar and the pants choice that I made 
we increased it another 10%. So 72% instead of 62% of the time is when we'll be critical hitting during our blade high. The next piece we'll talk about is the Odor Earring. This comes from Domain Invasion and cost 1,000 points. It's a phenomenal piece that will not only help with your accuracy in the weapon skill, but also add 5% to your critical hit rate. You will also be using this until endgame. Now for the ammo slot, we're going to use the Yetshila ammo piece. Now this will add only 1% to your critical hit rate, but it boosts your critical hit damage by 5%. So that's 72% of the time that you're going to critical hit with your blade high, it's going to increase that damage by 5%. So this is a great piece here. Now there is a plus one version of this that's usually selling for around 20 million gil. There is better money to be spent elsewhere at this point, but by the time we get to our elite gear set, that's what you'll be expected to have. Now, for our second earring, we're going to go with our Brutal Earring. There's not a whole lot of options in this slot at this point in the game in regards to weapon skill damage or agi. You can just add, you know, two, two agi or so. So at this point, really the double attack from that earring is going to kind of overwhelm anything else. Now, the opponent's ring is what we're going to use in the second ring slot. Kind of the same situation here. We don't really have access to any other critical hit rings at this point or weapon uh, skill damage rings, with the exception of the one that I'm about to point out. And that is, you can always go ahead and go with the Korea ring that is from completing the Eldulin missions. Now, if you do that, this is going to boost your weapon skill damage by 3% and your weapon skill accuracy by 5 But I know lots of other people may have chosen a different ring, so I didn't want to just assume that you'd have it. So I would go with either the opponent's here or the Korea ring if you happen to have one. Now, the last item we have to talk about is the back piece. Now for here, I suggest you actually create a second cape for your ninja, and this one's going to increase your agi by 30, and your weapon skill damage by 10%. Now this is kind of the de facto for what you would want to use for a weapon skill cape, but know that since it's blade high, you do technically have another option if you really wanted to push that critical hit percentage. You could go with a mantle that has still the agi 30 on it, but instead of weapon skill damage of 10%, critical hit rate of 10%. Now in this setup, I really would prefer to go with the weapon skill damage if we're just comparing apples to apples. Both of them have AG30 on it, so the only real difference is 10% weapon skill damage or 10% critical hit rate. If you're comparing two things that directly, at this point weapon skill damage really does kind of take the cake. But know that when it comes to the parser, there isn't really that much difference between these two uh, in my testing. Next, we will go over a fast cast gear set. Now this gear set is a prime example of one that we don't really have enough gear to completely fill out yet because most of the fast cast gear we're going to get will come from later content in the game. However, if we're going to start soloing a bunch of the things that I expect you to solo for the advanced gear set, you're definitely going to need to lower that Usesame timer. So in order to do that, this is the gear set I recommend you use. The first piece we will go over in our fast cast set is the Teon Tabard in the body slot. Now this can be acquired through a Luvian Skirmish and it has a native fast cast trait of 4%, and then you can augment it for as high as a 5% fast cast trait for a total of 9% on the body. Now, if you haven't ever done skirmish or alluvian skirmish, that's okay. I hadn't either. And if you actually go into your ROE objectives underneath Tutorials Intermediate, if you go through all of those objectives in there and beat all the quests, one of the last ones will reward you with any item you want from alluvian skirmish. I chose this item, and that's how I happened to get this. All of those intermediate objectives should be soloable by you and your ninja at this point in the game. Now we're going to move to our back piece, the Andartias Mantle. Now this is not only going to give us one extra shadow when we cast Ut Sesame, but also has a fast cast trait of 10% on it. Now I've added this trait to our Magic Accuracy Cape, so this will actually be the third cape that I'm recommending you make. With these stats of Int, and magic accuracy on it as well as some magic damage and I actually suggest you add an augment to this that I don't show right here and that is you can also add damage taken minus five percent to this the reason that is important is if we mix that with our defending ring which is the next thing that I'm recommending you use in this setup along with our offhand katana we already have a 20 percent damage reduction when wearing this setup and since we'll normally be wearing it when we're trying to recast shadows, there's a good chance our shadows might be down, and therefore we could be taking some damage, so that damage reduction is going to help. I find the damage reduction more important at this stage, but another option is a prolix ring, which will give you a fast cast trait of 2%. Next we'll talk about our left earring, which is Locatius earring. Now this is going to give you a fast cast effect of 2%. 
You can get this from Limbus and purchase it from Sug Huria in Port Juno at I-8 for 75 Ancient Beast Coins. So you can either farm those by doing the Limbus event or just purchase 75 Ancient Beast Coins from someone's bazaar if you happen to find them. Next, let's talk about the next slot. You'll notice that I have a Betel Pendant equipped. Now, this does not qualify for this gear set as it comes from Eshin Ruan. So what I'm actually recommending is that you have a Volt Surge Torque. This has the exact same fast cast 4% that you're looking for, and it comes from the Avatar Prime 2 Ramu fight. It's a fairly easy drop that you should get in a few runs of difficult. Now what is better than both of those is the Orun Millis Torque that you can get from Meeble Burrows. Now I sadly have never done this event, so I can't really speak to how difficult this is to get, but I have heard that it's fairly difficult to obtain. It's on my list of things to do next, so hopefully I'll figure it out and make a video explaining to others how to get this as well. In the ammo slot, I recommend a staunch Tathlum. The main reason I recommend this is for its spellcasting interruption minus 10%. Now normally you're going to be casting good sesame, so this is definitely going to help to make sure that you do not get interrupted. Its damage taken reduction also allows you to reach the damage taken reduction cap. The next item we're going to talk about here is the helm, the hands, and the legs. Now the next three slots are tricky, and that is the head, the hands, and the pants. Normally I'd be recommending to you that you'd get a Teon Chapeau, gloves, and tights, each with a 5% fast cast augment on them, therefore adding 15% fast cast. However, in my next video I'll be recommending that you get a Herculean helm with 13% fast cast on it, Leeline gloves with 8% fast cast, and Herculean trousers with 6% fast cast. So given that, I don't really see that there's a reason for you to waste the, what's going to be quite a bit of time, getting all of these Taeon items. So I would recommend just going ahead and waiting until we get to the next video to get these other items as they are relatively easy to obtain. However, if you don't want to wait for it, off to Alluvian Skirmish you go for your Taeon items. The next and arguably most important addition to this gear set is the Hattori Kahan Plus One. This will give you an additional shadow each time you cast Suit Sesame. So therefore you'll be getting two additional shadows between your cape and your boots. Now, the process to get this will be kind of long. First you'll start in Abyss Vunkral, opening Gold Sturdy Pixities until you find one with your boots inside. Now if you find boots for another job, make sure you grab them, because if you get three boots for other jobs, you can actually trade them for your ninja boots. After you get the boots, you will then need to upgrade them four different times through the Trial of Magians and through Monoset in Juno in order to get them to level 119. Now that may seem like a lot of work, but there are a few items that you can get for ninja that are going to have as big a benefit on you as these will, so you definitely want to get them as soon as possible. Now the last thing we're going to have to go over in our fast cast gear set are these three items. The right earring, the right ring, and the belt. Now there aren't any fast cast items that we can put in these slots as of right now, and we have another issue to deal with as well, and that is that the hit point difference between our current TP set and this fast cast set, if we're using Taeon, is 176 hit points, and if we're using Hercules, it's 181 hit points. That means every time we go to cast Shadows, our maximum hit points are going to drop by 181. This is obviously going to leave us as kind of a disadvantage and always around that 2,000 hit point mark. Due to this, I would recommend adding hit points through these three slots. If you use the Abani Earring and the Meridian Ring with a Kasari Belt, you will get back 165 of those missing hit points, as well as add 13 Evasion and 3 Enmity. If you add the Wondrous Belt instead, you will lose that Evasion and Enmity, but you will cover all of that missing hit points. That's going to be it for our Fast Cast set. Four sets to go. Let's move on to our Magic Accuracy gear set. Now the Magic Accuracy gear set is a fairly easy one. You just want to stack on as much Magic Accuracy as possible. Thankfully, the Mumu Plus 2 set that we acquired in our last video is going to help us with this substantially. It has the highest levels of magic accuracy that can be found in almost any gear in the game. Even in Endgame, there's only going to be a few pieces that we are going to be able to get that will rival these. So these are definitely a solid start to your magic accuracy setup. After these, let's go ahead and turn our attention to our cape, because we'd already addressed that in our previous fast cast setup. This back piece will be the same one that we used in our fast cast setup, with 30 magic accuracy and 20 intelligence on it. Now we'll go up to our neck piece that has 10 magic accuracy on it, and it is the Sanctity Necklace that we got for 100 Domain Invasion points. 
Next, I'll turn your attention to the Stealth Earring that we can get from Limbus for 75 Ancient Beastman coins. The next item is the Right Earring, and this is the Hinos Earring that has 10 Ninjutsu skill on it, or the equivalent of 10 Magic Accuracy. You can get this from Domain Invasion as well, and it costs 600 points. For rings, I recommend you use two Stakini rings. Each of them will give you a magic accuracy boost of 13. Five from your ninjutsu magic skill and eight from a magic accuracy boost. You can purchase them on the auction house. Now, the next item we're going to talk about is the waist, which is an ovate rope, which you can also get off the auction house for a fairly reasonable price and has eight magic accuracy on it. Now the final item we're going to talk about is the ammo piece. Now this Yammering is the final endgame piece that you will put here, but this is not what you'll be using at this stage. I actually do not have that piece anymore because I threw it away, so here's what the piece you'll be shooting for is. Plumrose Satchet, which can be obtained by defeating the HTMB Avatar Prime 2 against Titan. I've done guides on all these HTMB fights on my channel, so if you're having difficulty with one of them, go ahead and take a look at one of my guides and see if it helps you out. Now we are going to move on to our Magic Attack gear set. Now the Magic Attack gear set is another gear set where it's going to change substantially between now and the end game. But let's go ahead and go through what it looks like at this stage. The back slot is the first one we're going to talk about. For this I recommend the Andartia's Mantle again. This will be the fourth cape I've asked you to make. This one's going to have an Int 30 augment on it, Magic Attack bonus 10, Magic Accuracy 20, and Magic Damage 20. The Salir Belt is what I recommend for the Waste slot. You can get it off the Auction House. It gives you a magic attack bonus boost of 4, and a magic accuracy bonus of 4 as well. The Sanctity Necklace is the next piece I recommend you use for the neck. This is the same one we use for our magic accuracy setup. It will boost our magic attack by 10. The Novio Earring can be obtained from Jailer of Love, and what I recommend in the left ear slot. In the right ear slot, I recommend Freomzy Earring, which can be purchased off the auction house. The next slot we'll talk about is the Ammo slot. Here I recommend at this stage the Flow Stone with an intelligence boost of 5. You can get this from the Avatar Prime 2 fight against Shiva. Next, let's talk about our rings. We'll actually use the same one in both slots, and that is a Shiva ring. Now, this is going to boost our intelligence by 8 per ring. Now, in the end game, we're actually going to want Shiva rings plus 1, which will additionally boost our magic attack bonus. So, if you have your chance to get your hands on those right now, definitely go ahead and please do that. But if not, the Intelligence 8 you get from just the regular Shiva rings will work for now. The next slot we'll talk about is the Leg Slot, and here I recommend the Geeve Trousers from Dawn 2's HTMB. Now this is one of the few pieces that we'll definitely still be using with our endgame setup, so definitely get it as soon as you can. It will boost your Magic Attack by 40. It will also give you an Intelligence boost of 35. Now for the Feet Slot, it's kind of situational. I primarily recommend that you use the Mochizuki Kaihan Plus 1, as long as you have put 5 merits into your magic attack bonus trait. If you have done that, then these boots are going to give you a 25% increase to your ninjutsu damage. You're definitely not going to beat that. However, if you happen to have put your merits into something like magic accuracy instead, then you really won't get as much of an important boost out of these, and I would instead suggest the Hachika Kaihan Plus 1, which will give you a nice magic attack boost of 13, a magic accuracy boost of 13, and boost your intelligence by 10. The Hattori Teko plus 1 is what I recommend you use in your hand slots at this stage of the game. Now this is going to boost your elemental ninjutsu damage by 24% if you've used Fute, and if you don't use Fute, it's still going to boost it by 14. So this will give you a nice boost to your elemental ninjutsu damage. So for body slot, no, I am not recommending that you have the Sam Nua coat like you see here. Instead, I recommend that you have the Geeve doublet. But sadly, in over 100 wins of Dawn 2, the HTMB that you get this from, I have never seen it drop. It is that rare. It'll give you an intelligence boost of 39 and a magic attack bonus boost of 42. So it would be a phenomenal piece if you can ever get your hands on it. If you can't, a good alternative is the Rawhide vest that you can get from Eshin Z Ta. It will have a boost of a magic attack bonus of 25 and a boost to your intelligence of 25. And it will be a good substitute until you actually get that Geeve doublet. The last slot we will talk about is the head slot. Here I recommend the Mochizuki Hatsuburi plus one. Now this will give you a ninjutsu damage boost of 15 and give you an intelligence boost of 22. Now once you get to the Hatsuburi plus three, it gives you an incredible magic attack bonus of 61 as you can see here. 
on top of an Injitsu damage boost of 21 and an Intelligence boost of 32. So in endgame, this is really one of the best pieces you have in regards to your magic attack boost arsenal. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our evasion set now. Just two sets to go. And here's our evasion set. Now in regards to the head, body, hands, legs, and feet, it's actually quite simple. We're just going to use our Hizamaru plus two set from Ambuscade. This has unparalleled evasion on it, and even in the end game, there's only one set that's going to beat it, which is the Malinx set from Lilith. So go ahead and slap this entire set on, and you're off to a good start in regards to your evasion gear. Next, let's go ahead and move over to the back slot. Now here, I'm going to ask you to make a fifth cape for Ninja. This one's going to be an evasion cape. This will have an Agi of 20 on it, evasion boost of 45, a magic evasion boost of 20, and I've actually put a dual wield trait of 10 on here because I end up using this with my Gokutai at times in order to get its regain effect. Now you definitely don't need to do that. You don't need to put anything there if you don't want to, but you could also add double attack to speed up your TP gain further. Um, additionally, you can add damage taken minus 5 onto this cape in addition to these stats, and that wouldn't hurt either. So know that you can definitely expand upon your evasion cape. I just haven't had a, really had a chance to do that yet with mine. The next slot we're going to talk about is the waste slot. Here, I recommend a Svelte Goritz plus one, which you can get from Walk of Echoes. You can also simply purchase this off the auction house. It gives you an evasion boost of 10 and an agility boost of 10. The next slot we're going to talk about is the neck. Here, I recommend that Ege necklace that we had spoken of earlier in regards to one of our sets and it can be easily purchased off the auction house. Next, let's go ahead and move on to our left ear slot. For this, I recommend a Ron earring. Now this earring can be purchased for 600 domain invasion points, and it will add 10 evasion skill and 20 defense to your setup. Next, let's talk about the left ring slot. I suggest you use the Portus Annulet from the old school Dynamis off of Diablos. Now, this only has 5 evasion skill on it, and there is another ring called the alert ring that has 6 on it, so technically the alert ring would definitely be better than this. However, that reduces your accuracy by 3, meanwhile this increases your accuracy by 7, so there's a difference there of 10. Additionally, this will increase your parrying skill by 5. So I just go ahead and actually choose to use this instead, but if you're going for pure evasion numbers, the alert ring is definitely better, and it can be obtained from the Faruka Fly in the Voidwalker NM system. Now let's go ahead and move on to the other ring, the Hizamaru ring, which of course just pairs well with our Hizamaru set, giving us 12 evasion. Next is the Abani earring, which gives us 15 evasion, 8 magic evasion, and 45 hit points. The last item in this set is the Date Shuriken that we got from Domain Invasion for only 80 points, and this will give us an evasion boost of 5 and also 5 agility. Now it's important to note what this evasion set has gotten us. In our TP gear set, we had 898 evasion. In our evasion gear set, we have 1197 evasion. So an increase of almost 300 evasion. This is extremely useful and will help us in those difficult times when we're trying to keep our shadows up. Let's move on to our accuracy gear set. Here is our magic accuracy gear set. Now similar to the evasion gear set, we fortunately get to use the same set of gear for the head, body, hands, legs, and feet, which is the Moomoo gear set. This has the highest accuracy numbers at this point in the game, and it will actually only be surpassed by the Kendut Saba plus one set when we eventually get that in our advanced gear set. We will also pair this with a Moomoo ring. It only has a base accuracy of six, but all the additional dexterity that we're going to get from the set bonus will more than make up for the extra few pieces of accuracy that this ring does not have. For our back piece, we're actually going to reuse the same back piece that we used in our TP setup because it already had 30 accuracy and 20 dex on it. Next, the Anguinus Belt can be gotten from, you can get this from Abyssia Conchant off the NM Kolkul Can. Now, there are lots of other belts that have 15 accuracy on them, so the only one this is really going to give you over those is that double attack plus one. So if you happen to have one of those other accuracy belts, just go ahead and use those because in the end, we'll be using an Accuracy 20 belt. For our neck, we'll use a Ninja Nodawa, which will give us 15 Accuracy, plus an additional 10 dex. Now if you didn't happen to get this piece of gear, you can go back to using that Ege necklace that we've used on a few occasions now, and its 15 Accuracy will give you just 5 less Accuracy than that Ninja Nodawa would have. Now the Odor Earring that we got from Domain Invasion is going to come in handy again. This will give us 10 dex and 10 Accuracy. 
Now next, the Mach Earring Plus One. Now this is a little bit too expensive for this gear set, so I'm not recommending you get this Plus One, but the Mach Earring itself is probably what you should get here. What I did want to point out that in Endgame, the Mach Earring Plus One is what I use over everything else. So if you have the opportunity to get that, I would go ahead and get it now, is because that's what we'll be using in our Endgame gear set. Now in regards to the ring, it's a similar situation. The Chirich Ring Plus One is what I use in my Endgame gear set, but it's a little bit too expensive to be spoken of in this gear set. So therefore, you can use pretty much any other ring. There is a large number of rings that have either six or seven accuracy on them. Uh, either just a Chirich ring that is the normal quality, the Atana ring here. Even you can use the Hizamaru ring. It has one less accuracy, but it has some store TP on it. Additionally, we use that Portus amulet that is, uh, you know, will work as well. That has seven accuracy on it. So really, there's a lot of accuracy options, all having about seven accuracy right now, which will work until we get to our advanced gear set. For the last piece of gear we're going to talk about, it's the Veluspa Tathlum. You get this from Domain Invasion for 1,000 Domain Points, but it does give you an Accuracy Boost of 10 and a Dex Boost of 10. Now since the Kendut Saba set already has natively high evasion, we don't quite see the boost in numbers as we did with the evasion, but we did get a nice boost of 122 accuracy with this accuracy set. Now let's see how this stuff performs. Now let's quickly recap just what the DPS numbers were on our previous three sets. Now our starting out gear set, when we had no trust, our DPS was 100 to 125 DPS. When we were not weapon skilling at all, or called white damage, we were getting 215 DPS. And when you included in those weapon skills, we were getting a total of 300 to 400 DPS, and our weapon skills were hitting for 2,000 to 3,000 damage, depending on which weapon skill we used. Now when we bumped that up to our basic gear sets, without trust we were now doing 400 to 450 DPS. White damage was 430 DPS, and once we added in weapon skills, those did anywhere from 600 to 800 DPS, with those weapon skills doing anywhere from 3500 to 4500 damage. Now the only outlier in that group was Blade High really started to perform when using this set. It was getting DPS numbers of up to 1000, with 5900 weapon skill damage. Now when we switched to our Hizamaru Plus 2 gear set, which is more tank minded, now our no trust damage dropped, to 325 to 375 DPS, our white damage dropped just a little bit to 410 DPS, and then our total DPS when weapon skilling was actually a little bit higher than the Mumu gear set on average, doing 670 to 850 DPS, and our weapon skill damage doing anywhere from 4000 to 5400 weapon skill damage. Now the only difference here is Blade High did not perform nearly as well, and it was definitely in that range right along with the others. So let's go ahead now and see how our intermediate gear set compares to these numbers. So as you can see, without trust, we've actually gone up about another 50 DPS from our Mumu gear set. And our white damage has actually only gone up about 20 DPS. So overall, our white damage and without trust really has not changed that much from our basic gear sets. Rather disappointing, but let's see if things change from here. Now, when you go through all of our weapon skills, we've definitely had a reshuffling. First off, Savage Blade, which previously had been near the top, is now at the very bottom, doing only 800 to 850 DPS, has powerful 11,000 weapon skill damage, but that's only when I'm soaring it to 3,000 TP, which is reflected in why those DPS numbers are so low. Next is Blade 10. Now, I hadn't tested this in previous setups because its DPS numbers were so low, but it is starting to come into form, so I did want to start taking note of what its DPS numbers were. It's doing 800 to 850 DPS as well, and it's doing about 8,000 weapon skill damage. And again, that's at 3,000 TP. Now this moves us on to Blade Shun, that is at 900 to 950 DPS, and it's doing roughly 4,500 weapon skill damage. Kind of sad, considering that's supposed to be one of our main weapon skills. Blade Kamu actually outperforms it just barely at 950 to 1,000 DPS, and doing 4,750 weapon skill damage. Blade Ku, which is what our Ambuscade Katana is made for, is only tied with Blade Kamu at 950 to 1000 DPS, doing 5000 weapon skill damage. Now Blade Jin is doing 750 to 800 DPS, so it's substantially behind all of these. But it does allow you the capability to skill chain with itself, and at this stage of the game, self skill chaining is quite easy and quite reliable. So it only gets 3,500 weapon skill damage, but when you add in the 300 to 400 SC DPS you're getting, 
this actually ends up outperforming all the other weapon skills as long as you are skill chaining repetitively over and over again. Now, obviously, most people aren't going to do that, so you don't really need to think of this as being better than the others, but I just did want to point out that as poor as Blade Jin's numbers are, if you actually are skill chaining, it ends up pulling ahead of the rest just because of those skill chain numbers. Next is Evisceration. Now, this does tremendous damage, even doing better than Blade High at this point. The problem is, it can't skill chain with itself, so therefore it falls behind in that regard. But it does do 1200 to 1250 DPS, and its weapon skill damage is 8200. And I'm using the exact same gear set that I use for that weapon skill that I do for Blade High. Now, Blade High has really come into form, and is really the weapon skill you should be using at this stage of the game. As you can see, it's doing 1150 to 1200 DPS, 1250 weapon skill damage, and because it can self skill chain with itself, we're doing 500 to 1000 DPS, depending on how often you can get those skill chains off. As you see here, I actually just got over 1000 DPS in skill chain damage alone. Now the last numbers I'll go over are the DPS numbers for what the evasion gear set and accuracy gear set look like. Now I'm not going to do this for all the weapon skills and such, I'm just going to go ahead and do this for our blade high gear set that is performing the best right now, and see how it compares. Now you're going to notice some interesting things here as we switch to our evasion gear set and accuracy gear set. The first thing I'd like to call your attention to is just the regular DPS numbers. As you can see, our TP gear set, which is wearing the Kendut Saba set, which specializes in multi-attack gear, has the same DPS as our evasion gear set, which is our Hizamaru gear set. And that has the same DPS numbers as our Mumu gear set and our accuracy gear set. What this is really meant to show you is that once you get to this stage in the game, so many of the different sets have similar stats or stats that are comparable that really the DPS numbers don't change that much when you add you know, a few double attack from this set or a few more attack from this set. They all kind of really equal out. Now the big difference that we're going to notice here when we're comparing these three is the amount of TP gain you get. And that's because with the TP gain gear set, we're going to have a lot more multi-attack. And what that's going to translate to is a lot more skill chains. We're only going to be able to skill chain about half the time when we're wearing our evasion gear set or accuracy gear set. However, we'll be able to self-skill chain 90 plus percent of the time when we're wearing our TP gear set. And that's why it ends up pulling ahead is because of the skill chain numbers that that results in. So you'll actually see that the skill chain numbers for the evasion and accuracy are roughly half of the TP gear set, and that kind of reflects the fact that you can only really do skill chains about half of the time when wearing them. What this all translates to is if you're not taking the care to self skill chain and magic burst, then you're losing most if not all of the benefit that this Kendut Saba set is going to get you, because you're in, in the end just going to have the same DPS numbers as you would have been wearing your evasion set or your accuracy gear set. So just putting on the gear doesn't make the difference, you have to make sure that you actually use it appropriately. Now I'm going to go over one last thing. I know some viewers may be wondering how it is I'm going to earn all the gill to get all these things I've gone over in this video. Well, if you're getting job points for your ninja, especially in the Eshin zones, this is actually fairly easy and you're already doing it. I'd like to show you how in case you aren't aware. Now in order to use this method, you'll need to earn sparks. Now the primary way you're going to do this is just by getting your job points in your Eshin zones, either Eshin Ruan or Eshin Rosenma. Now when you're in these zones, whatever mobs you're fighting, you want to make sure that you go into your ROE quest here and select the quest and accept it for whatever mob type you're killing. And therefore you'll be getting 300 sparks every time you kill those number of mobs. Additionally, if it's the right time of the week, then the limited time challenge can also offer you a great chance at sparks. The best event that you're hoping for is the gain experience event. With this, you will literally get 300 sparks every time you kill something in Rosenma or in Ruan. So, you look at the times there on the left hand side, and I'm circling all of the gain experience. You want to try and be on getting XP during those times. If you do, then you can get on average 400 sparks per run, because it's a 4 hour window, I get about 100 sparks per hour, and that's conservatively. The other events will help of course as well, especially if you target either vermin or seals, what have you. But really the one that you want to focus on is that gain experience event, as that's the one that you'll get the most money from. Now once you have those sparks, you want to go to this equipment, level 71 through 98, and scroll to the third page. On the third page, second from the bottom, you're going to find this Archeron shield here for 2755 sparks. Buy as many of these as you can until you're all bought out of sparks. 
Then go to any NPC and you can sell it for almost 28,000 gil. Do this until all of your sparks are gone and then go out and XP some more and repeat this process. Using this technique, you can earn 1 million gil for every 100,000 sparks. This is 4 million gil for every XP event if you actually do it for the entire 4 hours. Doing this method, you should be able to easily get the gil for all the things I mentioned in this video. I hope that helped, and I hope this video helps. In our next video, we will be going over advanced gear sets, which will basically cover anything that you can get yourself solo on Ninja. Then our final gear set video following that will be our elite gear set video, which will basically cover all the things that you can only get through group content. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Have a great week.